My name is Henry Strickland. Uh, most friends call me Strick. You can call me Henry. My puzzle, <laughs> whatever. My puzzle is a, is a, is a blinky toy. Um, it's a moo puzzle. It's based on a, a famous moo puzzle by Douglas Hofstetter. But uh, unlike some of the famous moo puzzles, this one is solvable. So don't just discard it right away and sing, oh, you can't do that. Um, there's a URL, URL written on it. If you look at the URL, It'll uh, send you to a page that tells you a lot of more information, source code for how I built this machine, and um, an Easter egg in it. There's a Turing complete programming language inside of it. And uh, using that, I was able to write this program to print the Fibonacci sequence while at lunch at a Waffle House a few days ago and run it on this machine. But I'm going to talk about superfractals. There's a book by Michael Barnsley, 2006. If you Google superfractals, you will also find um, some PDFs of a couple of papers. The shorter one is particularly accessible. All right, so now we can go here. Sierpinski's triangle. The usual way I explain it to people is you start with a triangle and you divide it into four and you remove that middle and then from the remaining pieces you remove the middle. But I discovered a, another neat way to make this. Start with a square and take away the, the northeast quadrant. And then from the three quadrants remaining, take away their northeast quadrants. And you keep doing that. And I can prove that this converges on exactly the same strange attractor because it's using the same iterated function system inside. Then I thought, why always the northeast corner? Let's take away a random corner. So in this one, I took away the, the, the southeast corner. And here's one at the next level down. It took out the northwest corner to start with, and then three other corners at random, three other corners at random. You can kind of ignore the colors for now. But uh, as you go down levels, taking away random stuff, it starts to converge on a set of fractals, which I had never seen before. But I think they're kind of compelling. You see uh, bits and pieces of triangles in there, but you see a lot of stuff that doesn't look like triangles. And unlike the gasket and the other simple uh, iterated function system fractals, as you go down into this one, if you, if you zoom in, you see stuff that is not copies of the whole because of this randomness causes everything to be different all the way down. Um, all of these fractals that these things converge on are members of a super fractal. And the superfractal is made out of fractals the way that this fractal is made out of points. And at this point, I would um, show you what an iterated function system is and Barnsley's collage theorem, the, uh, the collage the theorem says that if you know how to um, tile a picture with shrunken copies of itself, like Sierpinski's gas can be made out of three little pieces of itself. The functions that map you from the whole to each of those parts are the member functions of the iterated function system. And the fern here is made out of four copies of itself. There's the lower left branch, the lower right branch. There's the stem, which you can make if you just shrink the whole thing into width zero. And then there's all the remaining part of the fern. And so you can figure out on paper, and I did, what the four functions are to, to do that. Another uh, set, here's, here's four iterated function systems, because when we start doing super fractals, we're using more than one iterated function system at a time. Here's the four that lead me to the, the super fractal I was just showing you. It's the maps that leave out one corner, leave out another corner, leave out another corner, and leave out another corner. And The way you actually use the iterated function systems, I think of this as being a, uh, which way is my camera? Okay. <laughs> um, I think of these as being like little logic gates. They take a number of images in, run them through the maps, and put an image out. For a simple iterated function system, we start with any non-empty picture we want, put it in the inputs, take the union of all the outputs, and then we keep doing that and iterating, and this turns into the fern. For super fractals, Start with a row of images, and they can be anything, uh, as long as they're not empty. And then have a row of gates, and I'm choosing randomly either A, B, C, or D, which were the four that I just showed you for that super fractal. 
And the inputs are also chosen randomly from the, from the previous generation. The output of that, we do exactly the same thing. Choose random IFSs, choose random routing from pictures of the previous. And these things with probability one converge on the set of fractals that make up that super fractal. Okay, back to computer, please. Here, just for fun, I have crossed the IFS for the fern with the IFS for Sierpinski's triangle. And so on this one, it's kind of dominated by triangles, but you can see there's ferns inside of there, and down inside of those ferns, there's going to be triangles. Here's one with this. This is another member of the same super fractal using the same IFSs, but this time the uh, the fern dominates visually, but you can see there's triangles down inside those levels. And that's kind of a silly example, but it, it's easy to see the triangles in the ferns and how they get nested and they're random as you go down. Uh, maybe a more practical use of this. Here, I'm using three IFSs, all of which are ferns, and the dimensions are, the, 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 the functions are very similar, but it gives me kind of a natural variation that if you were, uh, doing computer generated movie or something and you wanted a, a bank full of ferns, you could use different members out of this. And so these are members out of one super fractal and the, the previous ones here are all members out of another super fractal. And since I have uh, 28 seconds, I'm going to um, speculate. I have not understood the rest of this book yet very well, but I think that the reason the super fractal is a fractal is because there's a code tree that um, the tree kind of tells you what IFSs were used at what points in order to, to generate each of the fractals. And for, for different decorations of functions on the code tree, you get different members of the super fractal. I think what's going to happen is if you have a, a couple of code trees that are the same except for way down some branches, their images are going to be pretty close together because all the most important uh, functions were the same and it's down in the details. And so, um, there's, there must be some distance measure that lets you measure between two different, um, two different uh, images and probably you can define some balls with certain radiuses that will cover the different parts of this code tree and then you do a, a ball covering uh, dimension to find the dimension of the super fractal. I have to say those last 30 seconds, that's all speculation. I'm, I'm still wanting to read the book and understand it. Thank you.